Excellent. All right, so thanks again for having me. I will be talking today about networking and job market, as was mentioned earlier. And I will be sharing some of my personal experiences before introducing you to what will be one of the most amazing platforms of this decade. And it's coming right out of our beautiful Jamaica and it's already doing amazing things. And I'll wrap up on that. I am gonna ask everyone to listen keenly and carefully because there's gonna be quite a few giveaways throughout the presentation. We'll be giving away very tangible items and we're gonna ask you as well to participate when possible. And it's not a monologue. If you happen to have something that's burning that you can't wait until the end where we have the question, you can say it, but it must be burning. Otherwise there will be a Q&A at the end. So again, thanks for having me and let me jump right into it. So the first thing we have to do, we have to define networking for us to know exactly what it is that we're referring to. And verbatim, the, it's the action or process of interacting and the sharing of information with individuals and groups of people in your field of interest to develop your professional or your social contact. Some people network to build their Rolodex. Some people network to have interaction. Some people network to socialize, whatever your reason is. What I want you to take from this conversation is that it's important, especially for somebody who is studying at the tertiary level before entering into the job market. Your target audience when you're networking, and we're gonna dive into this a little bit more, but it should be your fellow students and you should start networking. It's not called networking when we're at prep, primary or all age school. It's really called playing and having fun, but it is a form of networking, especially when you have some children that are not so, they're not open to socialization. You know, there was always the child who at lunchtime, they locked up in the classroom and continued to study. And then the ones who played so hard that they came in late. It's important to do it at all levels of your life. So if you do, as you get older and have children, if you find that your child is isolating themselves like that, encourage it as early as possible because it's gonna become a behavioral trait that is difficult to learn if learned too late. Online networking, leveraging professional online platforms to communicate with others, leveraging other social media platforms. I heard you talk about TikTok, Pinterest, and a few others to just interact. Make sure some of that networking is happening in person though, and it's not all online. And of course, professionals. You may not know or have any professionals at school outside of your faculty members, but your parents and they have friends, network with them, talk to them about the job opportunities out there, prospects, what the work world looks like. Just have general engagement with them so you can learn. So that should be your target audience at a high level. Why network? You learn about organizations and their culture. You should actually be using tools like Glassdoor, which does have some Jamaican companies in there, but it does have a global coverage to research your company that you're looking to work for that is in the area of expertise that you are studying. You should network to establish relationships, meet new people, get new perspectives. Your way of thinking is not always the right way of thinking. I can tell you that for a fact. Perspective is important and networking allows you to get new perspective. It allows you to interact with people who have similar goals and objectives. And it also allows you to identify skills and qualifications for your job. By again, going back to doing that research, you are able to maximize on your earnings by identifying early your entering. This is the perfect time to identify your niche your area of study and ascertain which one pays the most. If you're like me, that's what my focus is. I, I want to do what I love, but it has to make sense financially. Start that early and ensure that you use the time before school even starts. So if you want to switch early for whatever reason, 
You don't wait until year three to start researching job opportunities in your field of study. And then at that time, it's too late to switch. Start now. Find, find unadvertised jobs. When you network and you talk to people, especially those people who are in the working world, sometimes they share opportunities with you even before they're published publicly, which means you have an advantage to apply early and to get through the door before the mass starts coming in. Without conversation or going online, doing your research, that's not possible. And the last one is to research. I mentioned this earlier in another point, but just to familiarize yourself with what's best for you, the best options for you to capitalize on. So building your network, again, your family and your relatives, don't underestimate the impact of that group. Their colleagues, talk to their friends, talk to them about work, about the work world. Team members, club members, I was in Kiwanis club, I was in the school band, I was on the netball team, whatever it is, interact with those people because again, worst case scenario, you'll learn something new because you can learn from everybody. I spoke about your faculty earlier, alumni, consultants, board members, of course, friends, classmates, roommates, their families, and employers, any professional association that you have, whether you did an internship, work experience, have conversations with those persons. If you are working while going through UWE, then talk to your coworkers, talk to potential vendors, consultants, Every opportunity you get to learn something new and interact, you should take it. And when you build your network, it puts you ahead of everybody else. As, as I said earlier, joining student organization or platforms like IconWork, which I'll talk about soon, is an amazing way to not just build your brand, but to communicate, socialize, and to see at your swipe, fingertips, exactly what the opportunities look like out there. Work part-time on and off campus. Whenever you have an opportunity to work, sometimes you are working for the person who is gonna be your future boss, but they already know your work ethics at the entry level. So it's gonna be very easy for them to take you in at a mid-management or a senior management level later on because they already know your character and your work ethics. Engage employees whenever there's a career fair. Some of us have a habit, and I've seen this happen time and time again, of disappearing or doing our own thing on the day. That's the day you need to be present. Events like these, you need to be present for. You need to talk to the persons who are hosting the career fairs, understand the industry that they're representing, isolate and document the advantages that you will gain from that industry, and start to use it to help to define where exactly you want to fit in the industry based on your course of study. So don't miss the event. You're making connections for the future when you go to those events. It may lead to an interview. You never know what can happen. So make sure you show up. Now, one of the biggest barriers to networking, we have to talk about it, is fear and pride. And you see me there with a lizard in my hand because that's one of the things I, I think it's the only thing I fear at this stage in my life. And I used to be afraid of the green lizards, but I'm not anymore. It's just the croaking, creepy crawly ones. And I'm working on that because I don't want anything to hold me hostage. Fear has a way of holding us hostage. So the networking session will be happening or the opportunity to network will present itself to you, but you are afraid of the fact that you may sound silly. You may think that the questions that you're asking are bad questions or you're afraid to ask questions. You may think that you're overstepping your boundaries. You fear failure, you fear rejection. You cannot ever allow fear to get in the way of your goals and worse, your pride. A lot of us, oh my gosh, shame. Shame stop people from achieving their destiny. 
You can't be an aggressive person pursuing your greatness and allow shame to limit your capabilities or how you engage. So let's get over whatever it is that's causing us not to network with others and develop those relationships, put it behind us, because the faster you do that, the greater your achievements will be. First giveaway, give one reason why people network. And the person will win the Tumblr that's on screen. And they'll also win from our Goffa, Goffa is our e-commerce platform, $50 worth of products from the Goffa catalog. So any volunteers, please jump in. What was the question again? Why network? Can you see the screen? The question is on the screen. Give oh. me one reason why people network. And I just oh, relationships. Who said that? Me, Danielle. I was saying to build relationships. Yes, that's a good one. Ah, yes. Okay. Thank you, Danielle. So let's give Danielle a hand or a virtual Woo. hand. You can do the clapping. Alia, who is on from the Goffa team, Alia, just make a note that Danielle is the winner. Danielle, if you could put in the chat your email address, we'll reach out to you for you to claim your prize. Thank you for participating and congrats. All right, let's keep going. So now that we have talked about networking, now let's talk about the job market focus, which again, you're starting, you're at the beginning, but the sooner you understand what it is that the work environment looks like, the better you're able to strategize as you go through school. Now we are gonna debunk some myths right now. So facts versus myths. The first one, a lot of people believe that because you can't find a job, it proves that there are few jobs available. Anybody here believe that? All right, so I guess you are acknowledging that it's not a fact and it's a myth because you may not know where to look and how to look, but I promise you that if you look at the unemployment statistics for Jamaica, the last time I looked at them, they'll tell you it's hovering around nine or 10%, but in reality, it's probably closer to 14 to 15%. And if you look at the underemployment numbers, and, and I don't think there's any public statistics, but it's a, it's a number that we use to measure in our industry. When you look at underemployment, there are so many people who are in jobs that they're either not qualified for or they're overqualified for. And there's still, every single Sunday, you take up the newspaper. There's a ton of jobs in there. There's a ton of jobs on um, any other job advertising site. And there's a ton of jobs on Icon Work right now. If there were limited jobs, that would not be the case. So let's stop saying, I hear it all the time. No job not out there, no job not there, Jamaica. No good job not out there. There are good jobs out there. You need to figure out how you can qualify and prepare yourself to capitalize on the opportunity. The next one, the person who is hired for the job is always the most qualified. Is that a fact or a myth? Me. Volunteers, no, Me. Yeah, I heard that. You know that we live in a society where sometimes it's who knows who, but I don't want you to ever focus on that and allow it to impact your spirit. Because if you start getting caught up with the isms, the nepotisms, the favoritisms, all the isms, you spend more time on that than separating and positioning yourself to capitalize on the opportunities. A lot of times the right person is not in the right job. You need to make sure that you are positioning yourself in the best way possible, and we're gonna talk about that, to get the job of your dreams, simply put. And we're gonna talk about that later on. Most of you know how to search for a job, facts or myth? Myth. Agreed. I'm 45 and I've been working for, uh, what, 26 years and I still don't know how to, I'm not searching, but I still don't know the best way to search for a job. 
And there are techniques and there are different things that you can do. The beauty about the platform that we're about to introduce you to, you don't need to search for jobs. Employers drive the entire job search process. Fact or myth? Somebody said fact? It's a myth. It's a myth. The employer creates the job, posts the job, but the minute you sit before that employer, you can create an entire new direction for that process. You can blow their mind to the point where they don't bother to interview everybody else. There's no second or third interview. They put you right to the end and hire you. How you convey your desires, your passion, and how you demonstrate your skills and your capabilities in an interview is what drives the process. The good thing again about the Icon Work platform that we're about to introduce you to, it has tools that allow you to step ahead and separate yourself from the masses. Now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my story. Why am I telling you this? Because a lot of us like to make excuses and say, oh, it's because I'm from such and such, or it's because I am this or this, or it's because of this, why I'm not getting that position. Crap, stop finding excuses for things that don't exist. So I'm gonna, my story, and somebody said this to me on Instagram, from the board house to the boardroom. That's where I grew up. It's in rural St. James. I was very poor. It's an old dilapidated board house. You see the holes in the floor? And there were as many holes in the ceiling as there were in the floor. And it didn't stop me from dreaming big and wanting more. I lost my father to criminality at age six. He was definitely not the most honest or law-abiding soul that you'll come across. And he died trying to escape the police and shot himself and bled to death. That's another story, but all of it is in my book. I did not graduate from high school. I went to Mount Alvernia High School. I wasn't the best student, no issues with the school, an amazing institution but I just was not a good student. And when it came time to graduate, I did not, I was not allowed to graduate. Understandably so, another story that I share in my book. I was sexually molested, raped and impregnated at age 15. Another story I share in my book. And I was pregnant again at 17. I dropped out of college and I didn't have anywhere to live because Unfortunately, I disappointed my family and they said, don't come back home. So I was homeless. Again, I tell these stories in my book, so I won't go into details. Now, despite everything I just shared with you, and believe me, there's a lot more that I shared in my book that most would consider obstacles or it would be every reason for you to not do what it is that you want to achieve your greatness. By age 25, I was a vice president in a US Fortune 500 company. And before age 25, I was earning a US six-figure compensation package, traveling across. I worked on five different continents, managed at any point in time, thousands of employees. I was able to take care of my son that I had very early, made sure he was fine. And because I grew up in that old dilapidated board house, one of my first big goals was to build a nice big concrete house. You know how we say it in Jamaica for my entire family because I lived with eight persons from my extended family. And I wanted a house that was big enough, big enough so that we all could have our own rooms. And I was able to build that house, which is the house you see here by age 25. And that was one house of many. So I don't wanna hear any excuses. That's the only reason I'm sharing this. I don't wanna hear all the reasons why you're not gonna get the job you want, all the reasons why you're not gonna achieve your big goals, all the reasons why your aspirations are not gonna be manifested. No, they're excuses. Keep them to yourself. We're gonna focus on getting what needs to be done to get to where we need to go. 
How I personally prepared may not be the same way you prepared, but I'm going to share what I did to position myself to capitalize on all the opportunities that came my way. The first thing I did was I adjusted my attitude. I didn't have the best attitude. I told you I was a bad student. I wasn't very grateful. I wasn't always forgiven. And I was always kind because that's who I am. But I just sometimes was not very grateful for what I had. And because of that, I lied about some things. And I, again, I share this in my book. I had to work on my aptitude. After dropping out of college and not graduating from high school, I had to go back to school. But school, I want you to not think about it only from an academic perspective, but also as it pertains to continuous learning. Because I can tell you that what's gonna differentiate you from all the other students that study now at UWE is your ability to learn, unlearn, and relearn. We live in an environment where things are con constantly changing. So continuous learning is not an option, especially with innovation going the way it is. It's a mandate. So I'm going to talk about aptitude and I'm going to talk about appearance. A lot of people underestimate appearance, you know, and we would like to think that we don't have to look a particular way to get the job that we want. But you're in denial if you think that. Don't get me wrong. If you are rich enough, where you can wear sneakers and decide what you want to do any day of the week, this is not for you. But if you genuinely are looking for opportunities, you have to present yourself in a way and a manner that will allow people to take you seriously. It's unfortunate that appearance is what people use to judge you before they really know who you are, but it's the reality. So you're either going to live under a rock or you're going to embrace it and make the best of it. So those are the things that I adjusted to get ahead from a career perspective and achieve my greatness. Attitude defined is the way you think or feel about someone or something. And that thought process or feeling is usually reflected in your behavior. Your attitude determines your altitude. You see me there climbing on the ladder? And what I'm trying to say here is, and I believe it's coming up next, attitude is a much better predictor of success than IQ. I'm gonna say that again, and I'm saying it again because we're talking to university students. Attitude is a much better predictor of success than IQ. You could be bright as morning star, have the most CXCs, the, 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 you know, honors on a master's or whatever qualification you have. If you have an attitude, you will go nowhere. It's that important. One of the things I want you to focus on, especially in this era of social media, is dominating and not competing. Stop looking at the person beside you and comparing yourself to them. Stop scrolling through your phone and looking, oh, when we go get this, oh, me not have this yet. Oh, I just look goody. I want me need for you to forget. You need to stop doing that because comparing yourself is, it drives toxic behavior. And we don't compare ourselves when we're about to take over the world. We dominate. Who is this on screen, guys? Do you know who that is? Any volunteers? Usain Bolt. Sir Usain Bolt. Who is this? Anybody knows? You have five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Right. Nobody knows. Somebody said Hold something? On. Oh, wow. Well, I'm, I'm impressed on. that somebody knows. But one person knows. Good answer. Who is this? Justin Gatlin or so, something like that. Yeah, but you're Maybe. guessing, right? Let me tell you why I showed you this picture, these pictures. You know, these two guys, Coleman and Gatlin, you know, both of, both of them beat Usain Bolt. Did you know that? As a matter of fact, in this photograph here, you see where Coleman was beating Usain Bolt in the 100 meter. You see that, right? Why don't you know them? 
Why doesn't everybody on this phone, everybody on this phone or on this, I shouldn't say phone, on this Zoom knows you're saying both, but one or two of you knows these other guys. You know why? Because they were competing. While you saying bold was dominating. You see the difference? You understand the point I'm trying to convey? Stop competing and comparing. Focus on differentiating yourself and dominating your studies, dominating your career field. Don't, and, and help people along the way. Don't dominate and, you know, show off and throw it in people's face. No, help people along the way but don't allow anything to stop you from being the best at everything that you do. When you dominate, you destroy your competitor. Be obsessed with raising the bar. You raise your standards and you set very high standards in the process. A lot of us as well, when it comes to attitude is we're afraid of failure or we're afraid of many things. And the biggest barrier to success is fear and pain. Either we're worried that we're gonna be hurt physically and it stops us from doing something, or we fear the outcome so we disengage and we do not move forward. You have to develop an attitude of not being afraid of failure, acknowledging your fear, not being scared by it, whatever it is that scares you. Green lizards, as you see in the picture there. I used to be afraid of all lizards. You know what I've done to not be afraid of green lizards anymore? I, if I see them, instead of running away, I sit in the vicinity and I go a little bit closer over time. Don't get me wrong, if they jump on me, I'll still probably end up in the hospital. But I've gotten closer to try to manage that fear. So now if they're in a room with me and they're in their own corner and I'm in mine, I'm fine. I still don't have that relationship with the croaking lizard yet, but I'm working on it. So you have to do what scares you until it doesn't scare you anymore. You can't be afraid to fail. Failure is a part of life. If you don't fail, you don't learn. That's, that's the way I look. My book is called No Regrets, Just Lessons. Every failure, every mistake, every Thing that happened to me, all the poor decisions that I made, the poor judgment that I applied, I look at them as lessons. And I don't look at it as a failed life. I look at it, I look at it as a life that taught me a lot. People can sense fear. This is why it's important to get over fear. If you're sitting in an interview, they can sense that you are, nervousness is not bad, if it's in moderation. But fear is something that's different. And because people can sense it, it will impact your progress. Remember as well that fear is temporary. But if you don't move forward, you will have regrets. Failure is also temporary, but regrets last forever. Do not quit. You need to have a no quit attitude. These two pictures on the screen, the one over here with me alone was when I got married the first time around. And by no means do I want you to take from this that you should pull a Elizabeth Taylor and get married six or seven times. I was prepared to do it because I believe if I'm going to succeed in anything in life and I fail, I'm going to try until I succeed. Marriage should be no different. If I needed to marry 10 times to get it right, I would have. Thank God I don't have to. But that was the first time I married. And within three years, I was divorced. Three years. Bad divorce as well. Separation followed by divorce. I could have given up. But I remember why I started. I wanted a life partner. I wanted somebody to, to spend the rocking chair days when I'm in my 80s on the veranda talking with. And because I remembered that, I had to go back and start again. And I met my husband in my kitchen. Again, I tell the story in my book and that's the picture to the right. You can't quit. You are gonna go to job interviews and you are not gonna get the job. It's not personal, remember that. Don't stop until you're proud of yourself and be prepared to do the impossible as long as it's ethical 
but be prepared to do the impossible to achieve your goals. You have to be your own hero. It's simple. That's the message. If I leave you with nothing else, that's the message I want to resonate the most from this session. See me there carrying myself on my shoulders. A lot of time throughout my life, I had to drag myself because I was on the verge of giving up. And I just had to figure out a way to drag myself to where I needed to go in order to achieve my greatness. Aptitude. This is the natural ability to learn or to do something. What you're doing at UWE is contributing to your aptitude. You are studying, you have identified your field of interest, and you are going to get qualified in that area. So that's a huge step when it comes to aptitude. But remember, I talked about continuous learning. And this elevate is something that I pull from my book. It's the success strategy that I teach to help people to get the best out of themselves. The first thing you need to do, and it's an acronym as you can tell, it spells elevate and elevate yourself. First, you need to educate yourself. You have started that. And when you're done with university, remember the IQ statement earlier, continuous learning is gonna be critical. Keep reading, keep talking to people. Keep learning, keep watching documentaries. You know, you can learn from every single person you come in contact with. L is for lead. Peer pressure cannot be a factor if you want to achieve success. You need to empower yourself. You need to believe that you are deserving of every single opportunity that comes your way. Because if you don't think you're deserving, you can't capitalize on it. I'm sure you realize that. You need to be versatile. There are times in my life when I didn't have any money and I had to be selling lollipops to go to school. I had to take photographs. This is long before digital cameras. I had to take photographs and sell them to pay tuition. I, I can't, I, I, as a matter of fact, I, don't, I used to sell clothing from my vehicle when I was a vice president because I didn't want to borrow money to build a house so somebody could take it away from me and I wanted extra money so I didn't have to borrow and I became a hustler buying overseas and driving through rural St. James and selling and crediting and literally being versatile because I didn't want it to stop me from achieving my goals. You need to aspire. <coughs> Excuse me. You need to dream big and you need to be tenacious. You need to have that fighter personality. You need to have that fighter attitude, becoming your own hero. And you need to be kind, you need to be grateful, and you need to be forgiving. And those are the fundamentals of building a strong character. So if you are able to demonstrate and make these changes to your attitude, absolutely nothing will stand in your way. Appearance. The way you look or your deportment. You need to dress for the job that you want, not the one that you have. You know, long before I was a vice president, I remember my manager, who is an expatriate, saying to me, why is it that you dress up so much from work and it's not required? And, you know, why is it that you, you're always presenting yourself that way? And I'm there in my mind thinking, a petitioner knows I want she get the promotion so I can get her work. I wanted her job, so I started to dress for it. You can't have a off days unless, again, you don't need a job, you don't need an investor, you don't need customers. Off days mean a day when you just dash down yourself. If that's the case, stay home. If you're going out, and you, there's a potential for you to meet the person who could be the one to change your life, you don't want to be caught off guard and not looking like your best self. Oh. Take personal care in your appearance. It is what everyone sees. And only a few people will get to know the true you and determine if you are a good or a bad person. Until that time, all they're looking at is what they see. So make sure what they see is unforgettable. You know that Harvard Medical School funded a study 
that actually said that women who wear makeup make more money and are ranked higher in competence and trustworthiness. Now, you and I know that makeup don't have nothing to do with that. Not true. But that's perception. That's perception out there that if you wear makeup and put yourself together a particular way, your success rate is greater than those who don't. Unfortunate or fortunate, it's a fact. So use everything that you have in your arsenal to your advantage until you get to where you need to go in life. Build your brand is the next one under aptitude. And don't wait until you're a big deal or until you're famous to build your brand. Start from now. You will thank yourself for it later. You need to develop an emotional connection with your brand. To do that, you need to be sentimental. You need to be authentic. You need to be passionate. And overall, you need to be persistent. Credibility is important. Character and not reputation is what you need to focus on when building your brand. Recently, I wrote a post on Instagram where I said, my smile is my logo. I'm always smiling. I'm always, I don't allow my mood to dictate my manners. No matter what's happening inside, if I come across somebody, they're gonna get a pleasant face. And I don't internalize too much. If something is bothering me, I fix it and move forward because I'm not gonna allow anything to stress, stress me. But I'm always smiling, which is one of the reasons why I struggle with wearing masks, but I know I have to. My character is my business card. I don't focus on reputation. Reputation is what people think of you. Your character is who you are. I don't care about what people think of me. If I, thought, if I cared about that, I wouldn't have achieved half the things I did. I focus more on who I am as a person and I build my character based on those traits that I want to embody in my everyday life. My versatility is my resume. There's absolutely nothing that I believe I, I can't do. And again, if you see me on Instagram, you'll see me all over the place. How others feel about me after they have met and had an experience with me, that's my trademark. And the impression I leave on every single life that I touch, that's going to be my legacy. Build your brand and take it seriously. That being the case, we're on to another giveaway and I'm giving away a copy of my book. I want you to name the three factors that I told you I used to achieve my goals. Any volunteers? Um, is it... Any? Is it attitude? Appearance. All right. So that was Stefian and Tani. Tani. You know what? I'm yeah. actually gonna give you two books. So Alia, please make a note. Ladies, please send a message with your email address so that Alia can ensure she gets both books to you. Congratulations! Let's give them a hand. All right, now we're at the icing on the cake and I'm about to introduce you to the platform that is going to change the world of work globally as you know it today and it's Icon Work. And if you're not following us on Instagram, you should go now and click the follow button and you should follow us on all socials. I promise you, you won't regret it. So it's the platform, I like to say it's a platform that's, that's designed for you, the millennials, the young people. Uh, I, I think I'm young sometimes until my 27 and 25 year old sons remind me that I'm not, right? But I know that certain things I don't want to do when I'm trying to find a job. And that's what we have tried to solve for. Well, we have solved for it at Icon Work. I want you to look on the screen. What you're seeing here is what happens today in the typical recruiting professional environment. This is what most companies are doing. Very few are using their own technology to amend this process and make it more efficient, but the majority are using what's outlined here. So the first step is they design the job. Then they create a job description. Then they advertise a job fair. And then from there, they shortlist candidates. 
They do a pre-screening, they interview, and of course, now that you interview, you narrow it down to a few people, so you have to shortlist again. There's an assessment that's usually done, whether it's a psychometric test or an assessment, if it's a job that's saying sales, an assessment that tests your capabilities. If it's a job that requires you to type, it may be a typing test, whatever it is, there are a number of assessments, but usually one has to do one to qualify for a job. These days, most persons need a background check, so the company has to get that done. And all of those nine steps need to happen before they extend an offer. Then you're hired, and then they need to go back and notify all the persons who applied for the job who did not get the position or positions that, listen, unfortunately, you did not qualify at this time, but we're keeping your resume on file. Very few companies do that. And I think it's so bad, which is why I love Icon Work, because it solves that problem electronically. We're going to crush up that process, just like you saw on screen, and dump it. And now we're going to talk about the Icon Work difference. Listen keenly, everyone. The process, the first thing is there are no more job descriptions. When a company or an employer has a job that they want to hire for, they now go on the Icon Work platform and they create an electronic profile with drop down menus that aid the process. They capture skills, KPIs, which are key performance indicators character traits and capabilities, whatever it is that they're looking for, they can outline it there. They can actually do a quick pitch to advertise the brand, to talk about good things about the company. And they can even have employees who are currently working there give testimonials that will help to pull you in more. And hopefully you'll find it attractive enough to join that organization. You can also put problem solving skills or capabilities in that profile. So that's step one. Step two, here's the one I like the most. And this is where I said, this platform is designed for you. You don't need resumes on icon work nor cover letters. I remember recently there was a campaign on Twitter to abolish resumes and cover letters. There's a reason for that. Resumes can be intimidating, especially before you have all the work experience and the qualification to put on it. Resumes are also not a good way for people to see your potential. Let's say I'm applying for a sales job. You can't look at a resume and know that I'm passionate, I'm confident, I speak clearly, I can give a good sales pitch, you can't. I'm gonna tell you how we do that on Icon Work. So we are abolishing resumes and cover letter. You go onto the platform, you create a profile, and you have these drop-down menus that help you with a profile. Very easy, very straightforward, and you can actually take that profile and make it into, you know, something that looks like a resume that you can keep, but the bottom line is you don't need to upload a resume. You create a profile, and that profile you can edit whenever you want, however you want, and it keeps working for you in the platform. Here's one of my favorite features. Now, when I left high school, remember I didn't graduate and I dropped out of college, I was pregnant. I sent out at least 50 applications and I got one interview and the company did not hire me for whatever reason, but it was just so difficult to get a job. And that's because I had a resume that was not very impressive. That's because I had a, re a resume. Sorry about that, my son is coming out with his music. <laughs> that's because I had a resume that was not overly impressive. And this feature, which is called the Icon Value Proposition or IVP, or what we refer to as the elevator pitch. If I had this, I would have nailed any job because this is your one minute, two minute, or three minute pitch of you advocating your skills. So again, let's say they're looking for a sales executive for a high profile corporation. And I submit my, you know, I complete my profile, but I want to stand out. I can just go on icon work and hit record. And as a part of my profile is my video pitch or my IVP. And I record myself. And when you go on icon work, 
link me up because we don't do follow and those things. We use Jamaican terms like big up yourself, it now keep, link me up, very trendy on icon work. So link me up and take a look at my IVP and you'll see what I mean. But if I'm going after that high level, VP level sales job, and I want to differentiate myself from everybody else. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to do an IVP or an elevator pitch to be a part of my profile. And I'm going to tell them exactly why they must hire me. And because it's a video, they can see that I'm passionate. I will actually take up something and sell them something insignificant. They'll see that I can convey a strong message. They'll see that I am self-aware and I'm tapping into my audience's emotional intelligence. So I'm connecting with them, not just from a mind perspective, but from a heart perspective, which is really where the decisions get made. And at the end of it, you know what I'm gonna say in my video, I'm gonna be very confident. And I'm gonna say, do you know, just like I did in my IVP, do you know why you need to hire me? Because you do not want me working for your competitor. Now you have this video paired with your profile that people can see. A resume can't do that. And this is one of my favorite features on the platform. You no longer need to go to these job fairs. You no longer need to flip through the paper to look for jobs. You create your profile in icon work and the platform does the rest. And I'm about to tell you how it does the rest. And remember earlier when I said, most companies don't go back and tell the potential candidates or the candidates that applied for the job that they did not qualify, but they're keeping their application on file, Icon Work does that automatically. So companies no longer have an excuse to stay in touch with potential or future candidates that they could hire. It's the right thing to do. It's just basic respect. Let people know where they stand so they're not sitting waiting with bated breath for you to come back and rescue them or provide an opportunity for them. It will do background checks, it will extend offers, and it will have assessments in it. Now, this is where the platform is completely different from anything out there in the world. When you create your profile, whether you do your video pitch or not, and you have, let's say all the companies in Jamaica, we have several large companies on there now with jobs, they create their job profile that describes exactly who they're looking for for the position. Icon Work uses artificial intelligence and analytics to cross-reference the profile from the candidate or who we call icons. Those are persons who have created a profile who is on our platform, whether they're looking for a job, they're looking to build their brand or just learn or just network. Whatever the reason, if they're looking for a job, the platform will comp compare their job profile with the job description from the company and suggest the ideal match. You will get an email. So remember, you're not doing any resumes and suddenly your profile is on the platform. You get a message. Hey, Aaliyah, because I know there's an Aaliyah on here. Hey, Aaliyah, you qualify for this job. Check it out. Do you want to apply? You click apply. The platform does the rest for you. And it uses analytics to narrow down those unique attributes that are outlined in the job profile with those unique character traits and attributes that you have to ensure you're getting the ideal job for you. Why would you want to become an icon? Which means you create your profile, you're on the platform. Well, the first thing is it's free. And it will be free in perpetuity. You will never have to pay to be an icon and to create your profile. And the platform will continue to work for you as long as you would like. Whether you're looking for a temporary job, a full-time or part-time job at this stage, or when you go into the full-time professional environment when you have graduated, it will remain free. We use innovation. A lot of these platforms that are out there still use manual processes for 70% of the hiring or recruiting journey. We innovate. We use technology to identify the perfect match and we do so in a digital multimedia platform. It's fun. 
if you're not looking for a job, if you're not looking for anything that's career related, you can socialize. Remember, we talked about networking earlier. You can network. You can, uh, you know, align from a cultural perspective, because like I said, we use trendy terms like big up, that non keep, you know, for thumbs down. I, I can't remember what it was, but you're going to enjoy because it, it feels like it is a Jamaican product. And although it's going to the world, we, when it goes to the world, if you log in from India or the US, you'll see terms that are relevant in that society and in that jurisdiction. But when it picks up that you're logging in from Jamaica, you're going to see all the culturally aligned terms that you're familiar with. You have tons of jobs available on the platform right now as we speak. You need to go and create your profile. You can create a profile to network to advance your career, to find your dream job, to build your brand, to socialize, or to get some free career coaching, right? This is what the platform looks like when you log in. So when you go to iconwork.com, this is what you'll see. We are still working on our iOS app, but we do have an Android app in the Google Play Store that you can download. So you don't have to go to icon work.com if you have an android device you can just use the app but this is what it will look like you can watch videos on here to learn more about the platform when you get there you simply go to create a profile which is right here and it will take you to the next screen where and you start creating your profile i would like you to use the referral code icon i k o n or simone s i m o n e when you're creating your profile. If you leave it blank, it's fine, it's fine as well, but you can use either of those. This is kind of what it looks like. You, you know, it, it looks like most social media platforms. You can post on it photographs, you can comment, you can link up with people, you can view all the jobs that are available from different entities. You see some here from KPMG, from Unique Vacations. We have jobs, as I said, from all the top companies. You need to have a profile on this platform. So you go to the platform, you use the referral code Simone or Icon. You then follow us on IG because we're always giving away stuff. You create your profile for a number of reasons, but here are some profile tips. You should use a photograph. You don't have to, but I recommend it. And you may create your profile and go back later on and upload the photograph. Make sure it's a professional photo and make sure you're the only one in the photo. Make sure your description, your bio or your headline is attractive. It doesn't need to be long and talk about your career aspirations in it. Include your internship, work experience, volunteer, extra, anything that you have. You don't have to do it all at once. You can just put one or two to start and then you build it out as you go along. Include whatever qualification you have. And when you're ready, you can do your elevator pitch. Like I said, link me up when you create your profile and you can look at my elevator pitch and you, know, you can get a, an idea or you can watch the video on the platform that teaches you how to create a, a compelling elevator pitch. Next giveaway, and this is the last one. I believe after this, we go to questions. So let's do our giveaway here. So here, let me talk about the prices. So it will be three winners and each winner will get a tumbler, a reusable grocery bag and two masks. And all of them will be branded icon work. So the tumbler will have icon work on it. The masks will have the brand as well. And so will the grocery bag. Three winners will get this. The first person to create a profile on icon work or the first three persons. Well, I shouldn't say the first three persons, but the sooner the better. The first three persons to create their profile on icon work, it must include your experience, photo, your qualification. Go to Instagram and follow us. And I have it twice because it's important. I'm kidding. I made an error. And then DM icon work with the words, I am iconic. So the first three persons to do that 
will get all these three gifts. I am moving to questions. Let me repeat it just for those who didn't hear. Three things you need to do. Create your profile, make sure it includes a photo, a little work experience and some qualification. Follow us on Instagram and DM us on Instagram. I didn't say that. DM us on Instagram. Just DM the words, I am iconic. And you will each win a tumbler, grocery bag, and two masks. So now we're at questions. Any questions, comments, or just general feedback? I'm always open to getting feedback and learning. So don't be hesitant if you just have general feedback that you'd want to share, something I could do differently or something I could do better, questions or any comments. I just have something to say. When you spoke about appearance, you know, it is very important because while you spoke about it, I was like, I, am, I follow you on LinkedIn and that was the first thing I noticed about you. You are all, you're always proper. You're just <laughs> always proper. You're Thanks just, you're that. just like, out. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, that comment. The first thing I noticed. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. I didn't see the name. Who was that? This is Carrie Ann. Carrie Ann. I just saw it pop up. Thanks, Carrie Ann. I appreciate your kind comment. Then if there are no questions... I just want to say thank you for having me. Thank you for being such an amazing audience. And I do hope that something I said resonates with you or you find value in something I said along the way. And, uh, you know, I am just know that I'm rooting for every single one of you because I know the fact that you have gotten this far, you have everything inside of you to achieve great things. Don't let anybody cause you to second guess yourself or anybody knock you off your tracks or don't let anybody's opinion cause you to have or allow anybody's opinion to have a negative impact on you. It's only a matter of time for you to get to where you are going. And I'm here rooting for you. And I would love if we could stay in touch whether on Instagram, LinkedIn or wherever, because in another three years or four years, if you're doing a legal program, it may be longer or medicine. I want to see what you have done and where you're going. And if there's anything I can do to help along that journey or after you have graduated, it would be an honor. So thanks again, everyone, and have a blessed night. I'll turn it back over to the host. Before you go, before you go, there are some okay. questions in the chat. Okay, let me jump on the chat. Okay. So there's one from Mariana that says, how do I ensure that I am dominating and not competing or comparing? Okay, it's a very good question, Mariana, because it is, it is a it is a thin line and it's so hard to not compare yourself to everybody else even i have programmed myself to stop doing it and i still occasionally do it i may have to draw up myself and say oh data come 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 that's not for you anymore what you have to do rihanna is spend so much time effort and energy developing yourself and creating the best version of Rihanna that there is, that you don't even have time to compare. How do you ensure? Set your goals from now. And I'm not talking about the goals for next year or the goals for when you're done with you. Set your five year, your one year, do it in tranches, one year, three year, five year, 10 year goals. Put timelines, and develop a path. And I, I teach this strategy in my book, develop a path as to how you're gonna get to those goals and allow that and that alone to consume you. When you focus all your time and energy on what it is that you want to achieve, you don't have any time to compare or compete because you are so caught up pushing for where people who you would be competing or comparing yourselves with 
aren't going, that it, it, it becomes irrelevant. It, it's not even a second thought after a while. So the, the, I'm not saying you shouldn't browse social media. Just don't do it too long. And when you do it, don't do it with the spirit of, how am I going to get that? Because you don't know how people get what I have, right? So how do I ensure I'm dominating, set specific goals, put timelines on them, spend your life, your time, your energy, focus, moving towards the achievement of those goals. And you won't have time to do anything else, quite frankly. I hope I answered your question, Rihanna. Okay, so next question from Carmen that says, what do, what, like, what if after a job interview you got ghosted after they would say that they would contact you? Should I reach out back to them or just move on? So it happens a lot. Uh, and that's why I like the process in Icon Work, Carmen, where it's automated that you get a response from the potential employer after the interview if you fail. And or I shouldn't call it failure, although it's temporary, but if that opportunity was not for you. If you do fall or, you know, if there's a situation where you interviewed, and you thought you did a good interview. Don't get me wrong. If you know you didn't do a good interview, introspection is important. We can't be in denial. I wouldn't encourage you to follow up because you know you didn't put forward your best self. But if you know you put forward your best self and there's a way for you to follow up in a discreet way, don't be calling them nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, and the next day, six o'clock in the morning. That's not discreet. For example, through email, or one follow-up call occasionally, maybe a few weeks afterwards, or depending on the urgency that they told you was around that position. Maybe it could be days or weeks afterwards to say, I applied for this job, what's the status? Be very discreet in your communication and ensure that your, your communication doesn't sound arrogant, it's more you know, what's the status? I, I, I just want an update. But there's nothing wrong with following up. As a matter of fact, I think we have a responsibility to follow up and to give the employer an, an, another opportunity to consider us. You're most welcome, Carmen. And Rihanna, you're welcome as well. What made you decide to, you know, write your share your experiences with other people in um, through the form of a book. What made you decide that, all right, I'm going to write a book, I'm going to tell people my story, I'm, I'm just going to let them know who I am, what I am, what made me who I am today? You know, Danielle, one of the things I find is that because we live in such a judgmental society where the first thing we, most people, the first thought that comes to mind as it pertains to someone is negative. And because a lot of people are fearful that if they tell their story and share it authentically, that they will be judged. And possibly if you have some friends, they might stop talking to you. I actually know someone who lost their job and ended up in a little sticky situation and all his friends stopped talking to him and he became homeless. We had to figure out a way to get him back into a house. Everybody that called themselves him, his friends neglected and abandoned him. So there's that fear that most people have, the fear of being judged, the fear of being excluded from your social circle, or just the fear that if you tell your story, and you might not be able to find a job or you might not be able to progress in life the way somebody who keeps secrets or who does not have a story will. Because of that issue, I realize that people are not proud enough or not brave enough to share their stories. So you don't have a lot of success stories, especially coming, coming out for people who achieve success early. You don't have a lot of success stories. How can you give people hope? If they can't see an example of success that they can touch or feel or say they know or run into at the supermarket. 
I got hope because my grandmother was a domestic helper for a magician. And when I went to his mansion, I saw that as a black man, I could live that way too, right? So you need someone that's an example to show you that you can do it too. And I felt I had a responsibility to be that person, to give people hope, and not just to give hope, but to help to lift them up. And that's why my book is also a self-help book, because I talk about, you know, I did it, you can too. Here is the blueprint as to how you can get there. So I, I, I shared it because I realized not a lot of people are sharing. And I have matured over the years where people's opinions of me, actually, they're really not my business. So they don't matter. So if I had shared my story and talk about, you know, getting an abortion after I was raped and all that stuff, and I lost my friends, they weren't friends to begin with. And I would be grateful to God for removing them from my life. If I had shared it and I'd lost a job or opportunities, those weren't opportunities for me. If I share it, and I'm sure people are judging me, but who cares? As long as one person benefits from me sharing it, that's good enough for me. So that's why I hope I answered your question. Yes, you did, Mrs. Kerr. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. 